Don't freak out, okay? The internet didn't really exist. I was advertising in print publications how to actually hunt, how to properly do discovery, how to do outbound as opposed to inbound. And it's almost like marketing became a mini silo. Like I'm either going to be SEO or I'm going to be content mm -hmm. or I'm going to be social media. I'm not touching anything outside and that's not... Um, back to the podcast, Marketing on Mars. Uh, can't remember which episode we are now. I think it's episode 14. Uh, we're going to have fun either way. Today, we got Daryl Prail, CMO of Agora Pulse. Uh, just super excited for this one. Uh, Daryl is, um, for those of you do, that do not know Daryl, he's you know one of the top marketers on LinkedIn uh, top SaaS branding expert. I think you were voted like top 10 or something in 2020, something crazy like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just an, uh, an amazing person. So when I reached out to you, Daryl, and, and, uh, you responded to my message, I was just super excited, super excited about this episode. Um, especially when you agreed to do hot sauce with me, cause that's, <laughs> that was like because so <laughs> I'm like wow I got screw the show you want to do hot sauces we're <laughs> in let's do it brother <laughs> um so Daryl um the the theme of this podcast um it's called marketing on Mars so we got these hot shots uh hot sauce hot shot mar marketers you are one of them and we're putting you on the hot seat we're gonna I'm gonna be asking you questions that are probably going to be tough. They're going to be hot. It's going to be hot topics around marketing. And we're starting this whole thing, obviously, with hot sauce. There's no better way to start this, this show. So what do you got in front of you? I got six options, dude. I've right, got let's, let's light a fire under your sass. That's from our friends at Chili Paper. They said that one to me. Um, I got extreme regret, which is a Carolina Reaper hot sauce. Oh, my God. I like that one. I've got Exoresco. That one's crazy. These ones down here, these ones, these little tiny bottles I've got here. I see them. These ones are, oh my God, hot sauce from hell. It's called Beyond Hell. Beyond Another hell. one hot sauce from hell called Beyond Hot. And then we got this one here, Spontaneous Combustion. All of these <laughs> uh, I have used before at a hot sauce competition that messed me up so bad. I was a, I was a disaster for two days. But I held my own and not to be outdone, I have a you glass have of milk, milk here waiting for, so all we're right. good. All right. Um, so let's not go all the way. Let's, let's not light any uh, fires in your arse or your, your <laughs> sarse or whatever, whatever it is. Um, how about you choose? You choose one that feels comfortable for you today. I, I got a, so I went to Portland a few weeks ago and I got this Tortuga Gordo. I, I got to tag this guy. It's, yep. it's amazing sauce. Um, Carolina Reaper as well, and it is spicy. So I got water. Okay, so let's me. do Carolina Reapers together. Mine's a Scorpion Carolina Reaper. Okay. okay. I did not bring a spoon, I so I'm going to do multiple I might have done fingertips. Might have done too. Yeah, so I got I got the whole. You can see there's evidence. I have it. I so here we go. Can't show evidence here. Hopefully there's. Hopefully I can see it. Can We're good. You're good. I see it. Cheers, brother. Whoa. <laughs> um, Hiccups are already. I don't think this was a good idea because I did not eat anything in the morning. Okay. Um, I got to stop the hiccups. Okay. I want to make sure. Let's do this. Holy crap. We're going to have to do some uh, hot sauce together in person if I ever come out to... Um, or when I, I come out to Toronto that. or Ottawa. You're in Ottawa, right? I'm in Ottawa, but I'm in Toronto every second weekend. Okay, cool. Uh, is your mouth on fire or is it just me? No, no, it's me. <laughs> Not just you. I've got hiccups. <laughs> oh, God. Um, hiccups should go away. Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll start. Um. I've I've already mentioned a few things about you. So 2020 top 10 SaaS branding expert. 
uh, top three marketer on LinkedIn. How does that work, by the way? Uh, the voting for the top it's three It's a bracketed marketers. competition, okay. like the NCAA. <laughs> so Chili Paper did this. They started off and they had 64 marketers that they they solicited the names, they crowdsourced the names. Those those 64s were put into bracket of 32 versus 32, and they were done in rounds. And I finished third. And do you guys like fight? Do you guys have like a boxing competition or some kind of like? No, it's all just vote, voting and polling here. And what they did was in the, initial, in the initial rounds, they had like, here's four or five marketers at a time to make it go faster. Yeah. And, and, and only one person progresses to the next round. So there was no, um, it's spicy. there was no uh, contest, no proof. It was purely based on reputation. That's all, all it was based on. Wow. Um, that's, that's crazy. I would love, love to, um, when's the next one for you? Let me know if I, if I can, like, they, I they're anything. doing it like imminently or they may be doing it now. <laughs> Sorry. This was a year ago that this one happened. And, um, uh, and the thing about it that sucks, by the way, is if you're in the bracket, so, Hey, hey I made the top 64 and then you're booted in the first round. You're like, Oh, I suck. I can't <laughs> even get past one round so yeah it's uh it's a little bit it's a it's a it's a curse and a blessing at the same time wow and uh you made it to the top three um yeah i was in the final round so i think i lost to nick bennett if i recall so wow uh we'll have to do another episode just talking about that because that in itself can be a full episode um we can get the crew from chili paper on i'll bring uh, oh yeah I'll, I'll bring my crew there my friends there and they'll take all about it because for them it was phenomenal lead gen process and branding it was it was fantastic yeah so very they basically take 64 people's reach and reputation and they just usurp it for themselves i mean it was brilliant brilliant um and we'll probably have to do like even hotter uh chili sauce if we ever got on the call Ah. together (laughs) oh yeah yeah Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll keep going down yeah. the list. Top 50 social seller, top 50 sales keynote speaker, award-winning content creator. The list goes on. Um, I'm going to stop um, feeding your ego and let's, yeah. let's, let's get into um, Agora Pulse. So currently you're the chief marketing officer of Agora Pulse. Um, you're also the host of a pretty renowned um, you know, a group of a marketing, like a group, a marketing group called the peak community. Tell us a little yep. bit about those two things that you're doing. Or if you're doing other stuff, you can kind of mention that as well. But uh, what's your day-to-day like nowadays? Uh, so where we start? So peak marketing is pretty cool. Peak marketing is a community for mark. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have hiccups here for the whole time. It's a community for marketers who want to be or, or already are chief marketing officers. So this is not the community you're going to go to to say, hey, what's the best landing page design or how do we optimize our SEO? I mean, those conversations do take place, but it's really about career and about the boardroom and about the executive leadership and how do you manage a budget and how do you grow and all these cool things you're asked to do as a CMO. So it's a fun place to be that. And what I love about it is all of the discussions are super strategic because the discussions you have as a CMO are nothing you've been trained for. I, I did a, a Twitter post today where I said the biggest uh, challenge when starting a new gig as a CMO is changing the culture to be accountable, collaborative, oh, aligned, sure. et cetera. Yeah. Because none of that has anything to do with marketing. It has no. nothing to do with paper, paper click or affiliate marketing. None of that stuff. It's all about people. So it's a great place to go to because, you know, this happens all the time. Someone will come in and say, oh, I've been asked to present to the board and I've never presented to a board before. What do I do? How do I prepare? Yeah. So it's those kind of conversations. So peak is great. Uh, Agora Pulse. So I changed jobs five months ago. After five, five years, I had a company called Vanilla Soft where I was the chief revenue officer. So I was a classic rare case of a marketer that took on the sales job. I went back to being a CMO. The reason I did was simply because I'd been there for five years, did my thing. Um, but 
it's, it's social media. I mean, what's going on these days? You think about it. January 6th, it's social media. Joe Rogan, it's social media. Brexit, it's social media. Ukraine, Russia, it's social media. Everything's social media. So yeah. Gorapults is a social media management platform uh, similar to Hootsuite okay. or Sprout Social. And it does, it does the exact same thing. That's who we compete with. And uh, and it's just a blast. So they're based wow. out of Paris, France, but they're global. <laughs> so I'm hanging out here in Ottawa, Canada running the show for a very cool French company. Have you been to uh, the headquarters in, in France? I have. In fact, funny story. We were trying to, they, they recruited me. It was a four month recruitment process and they were trying to close the deal on me. And so finally the CEO said like, um, Daryl, I'll fly to Ottawa and we'll schmooze. That, that's how like, you know. Dude. That's how you know they're serious if they're willing to fly to Ottawa. That's how they're serious, right? <laughs> And he's like, I said, dude, and this was January. I said, you don't want to fly to Ottawa, Canada, middle of winter in January. That's just stupid. And he goes, well, do you want to go to Paris? Paris instead. And I said, oh, my love, my wife would love that. She's never been there. And he's, he's like, she's never been? And I was like, no, no, I have, but she's not. And he goes, I'll fly you both. Wow. So that's in how January you this year, the both of us went to Paris. That's how you, how she closed a deal. My wife said, yeah, do it. Uh, but yeah, I'm headed there in another two weeks. So I'm going this is a cool company. So I'm going there for two weeks in the month of September, uh, where we're spending three, four days, three, four days becoming, uh, doing leadership training. And then we fly to Corsica, the island of Corsica, which is beside wow. Italy, but still part of France. Yeah. Where we're going to do on a seaside villa executive training and then back to Paris where I'm flying the whole global marketing team in almost 40 people for a week of training. So it's going to be a blast. That's amazing. By the way, let's, let's have a, let's have a little drink of water. I've been doing that already. I'm doing the milk. But I do have the water too. Maybe that's a better idea. Um, do you find water makes it better or worse? Um, n- neither. Um, it, kinda, it, it just is going to do its uh, it's going to do its thing. It's going to take its time. It's it's slowly fading off. I just um, I just I I just want to make sure that uh, we can get your hiccups gone by the twelve minute mark or the thirteen minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Smart. Um, just so we're not, uh, uh, unless we're going to start a counter on how many hiccups uh, Daryl does for the show. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Um, so, okay. So you're at Agora Paul Sprout. It's kind of like a Sprout Social or Hootsuite. Uh, you've been there for a little while. So tell us, maybe a, tell us a little bit about um, like Agora and where they're at right now. Uh, I know you guys have raised a little bit of money. Um, uh, maybe some stats on where Agora is now as a company. Cool. Okay. So Agora Pulse, I think is around 12 years old. Don't quote me on that one. We've had a very, very small round, more of a friends and family round. Uh, we're a decent sized company. We're roughly 20 out of million US in revenue, uh, roughly 175 employees, um, profitable, uh, which is amazing to think about. Um, and we're doing really, really well. We're growing, as you may imagine, with the proliferation of social media, we're riding that wave. We started off as a Facebook tool. That's how we began life. So company's doing well. We are ranked top by Forrester and Gartner and all those people who do all those wonderful reports. We're in the upper right-hand corner, right up there with uh, Sprout and Hootsuite uh, every single time. So that's kind of who we compete against. We are targeting the mid-market. If you are our sweet spot for us is if you're an agency, like a marketing agency, or you're an e-commerce play, or maybe a B2B like a SaaS, that's where we would play. Um, so big push there. That's the company. Um, why I was hired, you'll like this one. I was hired for three specific reasons that were very clear, articulated to me. One was, Daryl, we need you to fix our silos. So like any global company, you can uh, you can relate to this, folks. We kind of had the Europeans versus the Americans, and they saw the world a little bit differently, and they had different styles. Right. So Daryl, come in and create peace and harmony and all that wonderful stuff. Yeah. Second thing was, Daryl, we have big ambitious goals on the revenue side. So I have MRR, monthly re- recurring revenue goals that I have to hit. And third biggest reason, and the most scrutiny, which is worthy of talking talking about if you want to go down that road mm-hmm. uh, the due diligence they did on me was daryl we need more thought leadership so for example simon when i said oh we're like hootsuite and sprout you went oh okay then which means you did not know that beforehand that's a problem i need people to just go oh yeah agora pulse hootsuite sprout those are the three amigos they do the same thing so they yeah. need lots of awareness and the number one reason they hired me 
was because of the awareness aspect. And they grilled me. They had me scrutinized by independent third parties. They did a psych test on me all to make sure I knew how to do that. Wow. So the world dark social is kind of the world we're living in right now, right? So because you think about it, Hootsuite, Sprout, Agora Pulse, and yeah, y'all, I, I would. I, this is the conversation I had in, in the uh, in the recruitment process. So that's kind of a commodity. You know, I could want do one or the other. You're almost all the same. Why you guys? So yeah. it was a whole conversation about education, community building, noise, hype, everything to create what uh, you would see. Like Chris Walker talks about nonstop these days, dark social. So that's with the big push on us, uh, which is interesting because of course you can't measure dark. So how do you do it? And uh, so that's, and changing a company's culture who wasn't wired that way. It's an engineering centric company and trying to mm. change them around to be a vocal in your face, very visible, very opinionated everywhere. It's a, it's a change of pace and a change of culture. How did, how did you do it? I mean, uh, you, you had to get every, not everybody, but a majority of the, of the company to have to buy in, right? With 175 employees, yeah. how do you? Uh, was that a challenge or was that already, was the previous CMO, uh, did, did he already or she already did a good job with that? Or did you have to come in, just kind of whip everyone into into place? It was a huge challenge. I would argue it was the, it was either 1A or 1B as far as the biggest challenges of my life. So mm. the, 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 the other biggest time I've had the biggest challenge was when I became a CRO after, at VanillaSoft. Vanilla, yeah. After being Last a company. CMO. Yeah. Tr- yeah, trying to teach them how to do sales and and as opposed and and this all kind of goes together. In the last gig, the problem was they were an inbound centric company. So leads come in and they're basically the sales reps are order takers. How do you teach sales reps how to actually hunt, how to properly do discovery, how to do outbound as opposed to inbound? And either you've got that DNA in you or you don't. You have processes and tech stacks and everything else. Uh, we can get into that conversation. That was a bitch. This was equally hard. This was equally hard um, because you have to, you know, you think about it for us to be uh, getting them to be so visible, so vocal, so everywhere, video, audio, like we're doing here, it has to be in the DNA, but if they're quite, they're used to being quiet, they're used to hunkering down, then you get a problem. And part of that is cultural, with the people you have on staff. So remember part of what they said was get rid of the silos. So I had to remove the silos to allow myself to have a, a company who was really big and prolific and loud and vocal and omnipresent. And to do that, it was a complete process of interviewing all the key stakeholders, interviewing all the employees, talking to the press, talking to the analysts, talking to the mm. investors, yeah. talking to a boatload of customers. I bet you I spent the first 60 days doing nothing but talking to people. Then I reorged the team, put in a much leaner situation, highlighted the importance of content, highlighted the importance of social media, built a massive social media team, built a massive content team. Uh, because how large, content becomes how large the, is the social media slash content team? The social media team right now is, is five people and they had one before and we have yeah. aspirations for more. Um, in fact, it might even be six people now. So part of that was, for example, they didn't have anybody on staff who were doing video. Nobody on staff did video, but everything's wow. video. Right. Yeah. So I hired right away two full time video people. I got open recs for more. The next thing I did was they didn't have a repeatable campaign calendar. All right. So they didn't have a, they didn't have a consistent content calendar and they didn't have a repeatable campaign calendar. Mm. So we had to go and really ramp up the volume. So on the campaign side, for example, what we went to was from eh, a couple of campaigns a month. And this varies by country. So now we're doing on any one month. You'll find any region. English speaking, French speaking, German speaking, doing at least two webinars, eight live streams, two product demo live streams, four email go. campaigns. All right. And all of that is video, folks. So then all of those pieces get cut up into shareable pieces that you can then share. You can transcribe. And it's a hub and spoke model. We take that raw, we give to the content team that raw video, we transcribe it. And then what you do is you go nuts by simply saying, okay, we're going to go big on the content. So now every single month, we're going to have at least one ebook. We're going to have at least one case study. We're going to have, oh my gosh, we're going to do do three blogs a week. Um, The list goes on. And we always have room for one or two additional ebooks that are ad hoc based on what sales needs. And it's all, it's all rotated. So for example, um, every month has got a theme Mm -hmm. as part of the content counter. Well, over to this side, which is, this is a really cool angle. 
over to this side that we never talk about, we own a social media community. And it's not Agora Pulse brand. It's called Social Media Pulse dot community. And it's got a huge following. And so what we do, and we want to keep church and stakes. We don't want the community to think that we're influencing the content just to upsell them. That's not what we're doing. It's just a community for social media people. But what we do is they got all these experts, all these uh, content creators over in the community. So I say, listen, September, we've got a theme of influencer marketing. So I go to my community and I say, can you, with your community peeps, do a bunch of content live streams and discussion threads on how to do influencer marketing, which they do. And then we throw that over the, the wall to my content team. And then they make an ebook all around influencer marketing. And then that whole month, uh, the, you know, for two wow. months later, and then that whole month, two months later, that's when all the webinars and all the email campaigns and everything else kicks in. So we're so really then you, so then you got this community. So you got this community that you're constantly building up. And, Crowdsourcing. And then it, that also, it feeds the community, but then it feeds the company and it feeds the content as right. well. Right. Right, because when I Brilliant. when we make the content, we'll say, you know, Simon from Social Media Pulse Community uh, it said this. This is the best way to do reels, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Or to use influencers, and so we're 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 cross promoting the community. We're cross promoting the creators, Simon in this case. Mm -hmm. All right, but it's all crowdsourced because what happens is every single person who's mentioned in those they share it. Ah, dark social. So a lot of that, a lot of partnering with people. The biggest thing for us, the biggest change I had to do, uh, a couple of big changes beyond the culture um, and the campaign and content calendars, which sound very basic, they are, was getting people to overcome their shyness, their reticence to be on camera. Uh, they would, they would want to say, hey, let, let's hire an agency. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't have the budget for an agency. Or they would say, I don't know how to edit. I'm not an Adobe Premiere person. So I would say, hey, no problem. Let me show you how I do a podcast using Riverside FM or Zencaster. Look how simple this tool is. So I would make a video tutorial yeah. about how I do it and share it with the rest of the team. They would go, that's not so bad. Yeah. Or I would do a video tutorial about how I use StreamYard. Or I would do a video tutorial about how we could use Descript for video editing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you get rid of that scariness and they also, they, then they get excited because they realize, oh, I can do this. So yeah. they just need a little bit of encouragement is all it is. And then watch out. They just take off. And that's what's happened now. They're just running with it. It's been amazing to watch the transition in a handful of months. That is a very, very good point that you just mentioned. Um, I think we were so used to this culture of, I can't, I can't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Hire a VA. You got to hire someone yeah. else to do it. And now yeah. what we're realizing, and I don't know if COVID did that, but I'm glad that you mentioned it because I certainly, within my team, I started really <clears throat> preaching the, let's figure it out together as a team. It, yeah. Like for me, I also don't know how to do it, but let's try to figure it out as a team. We use Loom a lot, right? And we try to figure things we out together. Big right? people Loom. Yep. Huge looms yeah, all the time. And that's that's the, been the big thing, especially overcoming languages, right? When I'm talking to my French team or my German team, we're collaborating in, in English, but hey, that's their second language or their third yeah. language. So yeah. things are, it's going to be even more scary for them. And um, and it's just been saying, hey, ease into it. So for example, my, uh, my French team just did their first ever live stream and they came back and they celebrated and they said, oh, we did it. We went live on YouTube and we used StreamYard and here it is. And they had phenomenal traction, lots of great sound bites. And I said, that was awesome. That was awesome. I said, well, here's, here's the thing. I said, you, they had two panelists and a host. I said, you, you stayed on the three shot the whole time. I said, next live, I want you, when somebody's going to, when you know you're going to ask a question, there's going to be a long answer. Go from the three shot to the one shot or a three shot to a two shot. Mix it up mm. like you would CNN, right? Put some right. graphics up there with a call to action. Drop the graphics. I said, it's push of a button. And they're like, oh, that's kind of scary. I said, well, then let's, let's, let's do a fake pretend live stream now where we can practice it and no one sees it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you'll do that? And I'm sure. Let's do it. Let's play with it. And you make your mistakes on me. So it's just encouraging them and, 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 and making them take their game. Um, you know, the whole thing about 
the modern day marketer, Simon, I just did this uh, session at a summit uh, last week where it's 3,000 people speaking. I'm sorry, attending. And the session I called it was um, the convergence of content, community, and creators, every marketer's worst nightmare. And the premise was the modern day marketer has to be a content machine. They have to be talking to their community. They can't, they can't just do email blasts anymore or social media posts in a vacuum. They have yeah. to be in the community. And then they Absolutely. themselves need to become creators. And that scares the shit out of people. It's so crazy. Um, I'm just having this thought here. And it's, it's almost like, you know, the, the traditional school um, uh, system, like you're, you're either going to yep. choose finance or you're going to choose HR or you're going to choose this. And once you're in this silo, you're not touching anything. You're in this trap. Like, you're, you're in this trap. Yeah, nothing else. And it's almost like marketing became a mini silo. Like I'm either going to be SEO or I'm going to be content mm -hmm. or I'm going to be social yep. media. I'm not touching anything outside. And that's not marketing is so dynamic nowadays and everything overlaps. You almost have to, you just got to, everybody has to be part of this marketing machine. Um, and content is that oil, right? It's, it's, it's what is what fuels everything up. So the example I shared with my team when they started to push back, and I'll get lots of excuses. And I know where the excuses come from. They come from a, 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 a place of fear and apprehension and anxiety. Yeah. I get it. All right. But they'll say, oh, Daryl, I don't have your experience. Or, oh, Daryl, I don't have your network. Or, Daryl, I don't have your reputation. Daryl, I don't have your reach. Da, 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 da. I don't have your engagement. Those are all bullshit excuses. What I said to them was, I said, guys, when I began marketing, uh, I'm going to, folks, this is going to be, I'm going to tell you something that's going to be really weird. Don't freak out, okay? <laughs> the internet didn't really exist. I was advertising in print publications and I was attending trade shows and I was sending out direct mail. That's how we did marketing in the day. And all of a sudden, they'll be like, mid 90s, what's, what's there's direct early, mail? <laughs> what's, I know, what's direct <laughs> mail? Um, and the internet comes, you know, it's sure it's been in with, you know, uh, academia for years, but by the time you got commercial mid nineties. Um, and I, so what did I learn from that point to today? I had to learn to use the internet. I had to learn to do email marketing. Then I had to learn to do like CRM, like salesforce.com. Then I had to learn to do marketing automation, like HubSpot and Marketo and Pardot. Then I had to learn how to actually, well, I had to learn all the way to do SaaS because when I began, it, SaaS didn't exist and it's a whole subscription model. Then I had to learn to become a data scientist because we had to measure everything. We marketers had to measure everything. And then I had to learn to become a video producer and a content publishing house. I had to learn all this shit. It's not, I didn't go to school for it. You know what I went to school for, Simon? I am a computer programmer. That's what I did for the first five years of my life. But if I can overcome and learn all these things, and you know how I learn them, guys? Two ways. One, I ask people. Actually, three ways. One, I ask people. Two, YouTube is your friend. And three, I just play in a safe sandbox until I get it all figured out. Because it's your career. It's your life, all right? And so you got to adapt if you're going to be successful. I think the hardest thing, um, I absolutely agree with everything you said, Um I think one of the hardest things, and now we're getting deep, right? Now we're getting deep. It's we're like getting deep, folks. We're getting deep. Um, it's this whole idea of, uh, I think, and I, I'm probably gonna ruffle the wrong feathers. I think we're in this. Go for it! I love it. We're in this um, generation where we want immediate, immediate reward, monetary reward for things yep. that we do, yep. and we are at point at times we are kind of overprivileged we feel like we deserve a lot of these things and to for me to go outside of my comfort zone to be making the same wage maybe some people don't like that and like i i, I yeah. can i can choose to not step outside of my comfort zone not learn this new thing and i get paid the same thing not not knowing that once you break out of this box and you learn this new skill your value in the market becomes so much greater and that's it's hard to see that I don't know. Talk to so, me about your thoughts on no, that. No. I'm going to talk to you about that, okay? So as we cross-promote all these other shows, uh, here we go. So I am scheduled to be part of a um, what's called Hot 
takes live. Not to be confused with hot sauce where drug is hiccups, but hot <laughs> takes live. We have a hot take, a controversial take. It's being put on by a company, a good Canadian company called breadcrumbs.io. Oh, yeah. Very yes. cool about guys. intent data. Yeah. You, you know them? Yeah. And uh, I love the guys at breadcrumbs. Anyway, they came to me and they said, Daryl, we're doing hot takes live. Do you have a hot take? We'd love to have you on the show. And I said, well, here's my first hot take. And they said, somebody's already got it. And I said, bastard. And I said, here's my next <laughs> hot take. And they said, love it. So here's what my, here's my hot take. To your point, I said, my hot take, and can you raise a preview, folks? I said, most marketers do not deserve to be a CMO. And they're like, and I said, emphasis is on deserve. I'm like, whoa. Why is that? And here's, I, I'm actually reading my abstract right now. I think now. I know what you're going to so say. Highlights, go I, ahead. I think I know what you're going to say, but go I ahead. Say, I said, they only want to manage and they constantly avoid actually doing it themselves. They never take a risk. They lament how they don't know how to do something instead of figuring it out on their own. They can't read a balance sheet. They complain about the sales team nonstop. They don't know how to build their own personal brand, let alone a company brand. They avoid conflict and they choose to hide rather than to engage with their corporate peers. They don't understand common SaaS metrics or KPIs. They can't spell ROI, and they don't know what an OKR is. They do not have the required soft skills necessary to challenge, motivate, and lead a successful team, nor will they ever intentionally learn those skills. And I go on. I love it. So, I, 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 yeah. Look what you, like, we're saying the same thing. We're saying exact, exactly the same thing. And I think... Um, what do you think is, is it that entrepreneurial mindset like that that separates a good CMO from a like a CMO okay a CMO can just become a CMO after being in the in the industry for 5 years just based on tenure you can become a CMO right but yes, like a good right company, CMO yes. entrepreneurial figuring shit out shoestring budget doing things on their own when someone when someone leaves the team, they go in to fill in the shoe because they don't want the sink to uh, the, the 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 ship to sink. CMOs that take Correct. like ownership of the project and it's that is hard. Thoughts? You you said so much there. So a couple of areas that just bounced off the page at me. Um, they can jump in and fill somebody's shoes. And that's what I always tell my team. I said, listen, I'm not to anybody on my team. So I, have a, I have a big team. I say I have about 40 people. Um, they're just 40 marketers working for me. What the hell? How the hell did that happen? And <laughs> I say to them, I'm never going to be the pay-per-click guru that you are. I'm never going to be the best writer that you are. I'm never going to be the best rev ops person that you are. But you know what? I'm not bad. And I can jump in and build that email and do that landing page and start and build that web page. It might take me three times longer than it takes you, but it'll yeah. look good. It'll work and it'll convert. All right. Yeah. I can still do that when time is happening, but you said something that was so powerful and I guarantee you 95% of your audience missed the subtlety you came with. You talked about doing it on a shoestring budget. That is what drove me to have the success I had. Cause here's why folks. All right. I was given a salary and then I was given a variable component. Now, if you're early in your marketing career, you won't have that. But if you're midpoint or upwards, especially if you're in the senior ranks, you will have that. Mm -hmm. I, I want my variable component. My variable component could be, you know, 20, 30, 40% of my salary, my gross, you know, on track earnings. I want it. Yeah. Here's the thing. They're always stretch goals. That's what they want to do. So Daryl, we need from you to generate 12,000 MQLs this year. But if you generate 15,000, here's a $25,000 bonus. Go for <laughs> it, Daryl. Yeah, um, yeah. So how do I do that? Budget. Here's the thing, guys. If I, y you have to look at the budget, too many marketers out there think we have an unlimited amount of money and we'll just hire everybody and you forget that hiring people costs money. Costs money. We'll get a VA. Yeah. Oh, it's just a VA. They're like 10 bucks an hour. It still costs money. Whereas, let's say I budget, I don't know, let's make something up. Let's say I budget $5,000 or something, $10,000, maybe a trade show. Yeah. We're going to go to a trade show, $10,000 budget. And if I can do it for 4,000, because we're very hands-on, we pull in some favors, whatever it might be, I now have $6,000 that I can spend somewhere else. else. 
Yeah. I didn't have to get more budget. I saved on my existing budget so I could do more shit and drive more leads, which means that I'm going to hit my stretch goals. The budget is your best effing friend in the world if you treat it well and love on it. The budget should never be an excuse. And here's the thing. 80% 80% of leads coming in these days, according to, I think it's Gartner, are all dark social. What does that mean? That means you can't attribute it. You don't know where it came from. It's not a pay-per-click. It's not an event. Mm-hmm. It's typically mm-hmm. a virtual word of mouth share. Mm-hmm. Well, what are they sharing? They're sharing content. Where's that content come from? It comes from podcasts like this. How much money do we have invested in this podcast? Not a hell of a lot. Whatever it costs for that, it for that shot of hot sauce, probably. The cost like, of that, shit, that co- hot sauce, the cost exactly, of the hot sauce, that's basically. it. Cost of the hot sauce. We get, our phones are make great cameras and mics. That's like where you can start from. And away you go and you repurpose it. That's the point. You don't need to spend a lot of money to be successful. And by the way, the number one channel for investing in in 2022, according to both Gartner and HubSpot, separate reports, separate sources. Number one is social media. And guess yeah. what? On social media, it costs you nothing. You're literally just talking to your tribe and sharing that same content that costs nothing. So my friends, own it, dudes and dudettes. This is this is like the world is your oyster. This is your time. This You're the generation that grew up with the phone. There is no reason for you to not have the tricks in your bags to like kick ass. So good. So good. And by the way, it's um, the best it's social. I also agree. Social and building a community and creating content is probably the number one marketing tool right now. That's why we do these yep. podcasts and we create all this content. Is it, is it the best ROI? I believe so. Is it the hardest and the most effort? Yes, it is probably the hardest. It is not easy to Absolutely get to, hardest, to, to your level, right, Daryl? I, I can't. You probably can't even tell me how many hours of podcasting you've had to go through to, to get to your level right now. I personally have done seventy episodes to get to this level. First two, first ten episodes yep. were not good. I completely. <clears throat> It was horrible. There were horrible episodes. Um, but it's effort. And what's the other alternative? You're going to sit behind your desk and just click start bid and just run your ads for $2,000 a month <laughs> and just let it go into the ether? I, mean, I guess you can. For some people, that's your – so I want to be, be fair to them because I, I hear yes, you. Yes, yeah. I want to be fair as well. CP, for some CPC people, does work. It does work. Some, no, no, all yeah. that, all that works. All that, I think that's why you need to have a multi-channel, omni-channel strategy, folks, because you don't know how they're going to buy. But that's, like, and the beauty of PPC is that it's got a high intent. If they're clicking your ad, it's because they did a very, you yeah, know, sure. long tail search term likely and found that's you. True. So there you go. Um, it'll also be the most expensive lead you ever get. It, that's an aside. <laughs> if it, if, it, if yeah. it converts and closes, then life is good. Yeah. So I'll use my, my head of demand, Jen, as an example. So this guy's worked with me for I want to say six or seven years. I got him when he was a punk. He was fresh out of school. He might have been 23. He's like your age, dude. That's how old how old he is. <laughs> he is he is my number two guy. You will never see him on a podcast or a webinar. Ever. And when I was mentoring mm. him, I try, I pushed him and pushed him. I'm like, Evan, you need to know RevOps. Go build me a RevOps team. Evan, you need to know demand gen. Go build me a demand gen team. Evan, you need to know comms. Go build a comms team. I'm going to make a CMO of you yet. Evan, you need to be prolific on video. <laughs> Evan is not a video guy. He's not a podcast guy. He's got a that killer mic. That He's got a true. great camera. That's not his strength. But here's the thing about Evan. And so for all you marketers out there, I'm going to give you who are scared shitless of video and being a public speaker. I get it. I hear you. Here's your out for all the Evans of the world. Evan is smart and knows that's not his strength, but he knows he needs people like me, people like you. He needs evangelists. He needs creators. By the way, we love, we love Evans. We, we love Evans Uh, and they, we need Evans. Evans Evans are fantastic. You got it. And so what Evan does is when he's building his team, he hires for those skill sets. 
Absolutely. Because he's got the other skill sets covered, right? So he says, okay, it won't be me. I'm cool with that. But for the company to be successful, we need a spokesperson. We need a creator or two or three. And then even in our company, one of the things I did when I got there was I said, okay, I am naming the creators in the company. And I have six people across our organization. I'm like, my CEO, he speaks to all the other CEOs. I speak to all the other CMOs. Yeah. I got two people who speak to social media practitioners. Yeah. I got my CTO who speaks to all the CTOs. In other words, what we're doing is we're we're doing kind of uh we're flanking our addressable audience, our target addressable audience with all the key people who could be involved in the buying cycle Yeah. so that no matter if you're doing, think, think about how people sell. People sell, they're going to follow an economic uh, a sales methodology. Maybe it's, um, we'll say it's uh, Medic or Bant or uh, Challenger or, or Complex Selling or Spiced. Take Spiced. What is Spiced? It's S for situation, P for pain, uh, I for impact, C, E for critical event, D for decision maker. Okay, so the situation is going to be owned by probably an executive sponsor. Uh, the the pain is going to be found by an operational user. The critical event is going to be by probably one of their internal sponsors or clients who are using the tools. Uh, and then you get the decision maker. It could be the economic buyer, for example. You need to make sure that every single one of those buyers in your selling cycle knows who the hell you are and what your brand is about. The best way to do that is have designated people within your organization who appeals to that persona. Right. That <sighs> there is you go. so freaking key. Oh my God. I can't, you know, starting this a podcast episode, I didn't know where it was going to go, but man, have we, we've dove into some covered pretty, a lot of ground. covered a lot of ground. Um, yeah. So it's 41 minutes. I would love to talk for another five hours, but unfortunately we both have lives to get back to, but um, man, really appreciated uh, your, your time on here. And I think uh, we'll, we're definitely going to have to do this again at, at some point. Let's make it an encore performance. Get you on one of my shows, brother. Yeah, this was so much fun. I mean, uh, usually we, we talk about, uh, usually I have like topics that we, we go into we talk we talk about the company and 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 you know how some of the marketing channels and tips we we talked about things that i honestly haven't talked to a lot of people about so really appreciate you really appreciate you coming on the show um, no problem. and uh, so yeah really really amazing uh, um and maybe uh, let, let's 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 end off we'll, we'll we'll give some love to agora um for the uh, you know people listening really interested in in what you guys are doing what what is there to look forward to in the next 6 to 12 months like what are the some of the next milestones you said you got some aggressive goals to hit what are some of the these next milestones tell you what i'm going to flip it on you i'll i'll see so watch what i see how i'm like a politician here folks i i listen to him i nod at my head at his question <laughs> and then i'm going to ignore his question and say what i want to say which is one of the things that Simon made mention of earlier was he said social media is one of the hardest things to prove any ROI on. And he's a thousand percent right. One of the things that, that the number one reason why I took this job is because of a feature that uh, Gorapults came out with uh, back in March. And I'm going to share it with you. There's no obligation. This is not a pitch. You can ignore this if you want to, or you can go get a free trial if you want to. You can reach out to me, whatever you want to do, but here's what you need to know. We did a study. We we looked at 10 million social media posts, not including Instagram, and we said, of all those posts, what percentage of those posts had tr a trackable link? Maybe to a call to action, a piece of content, whatever it might be, but it was trackable. It wasn't just a link. Hey, you know, Simon's whitepaper.com. It wasn't that. It was UTM codes, the whole nine yards. All right. 98.2% of all social media posts, all 10 million, had no trackable links. Why? Because mm. the social media apps out there don't let you do that. Agora Pulse automates everything for you. Brand new feature. So if you want more budget, if you want to see the ROI of what you're doing on social, so you can say, this is what I did. This is how I impact it just by being on podcasts and talking to my homies on social. This is the revenue. Hard, not likes, not shares, not comments. This is the dollars and cents that I drove 
check out agorapulse.com. That's my favorite one marketer to another. Can we um can we get uh, our, our our stuff on there? Like this podcast on there? Yes, you can. Okay. Talk oh. to me offline. I know people. We will I'll hook you up. We'll 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 have to do a second uh a second call. It's my excuse to do another shot of hot sauce with you. So well, we'll I do love that. it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we'll have to get you on for round two.